For me, the most difficult part of, of 2020 was playing in empty stadiums. You know, so much of, of what we do is, is to feed off the energy and the environment that we get to play in, and there's no way to replace a, a full stadium. You know, I think the first game, we came out of the we came out of the tunnel, it was dead. I remember going up to a couple of players, and I said, we need to get some juice in here. It's a nice stuff. They can't turn it up. Why? They, they can only have it at a certain decibel through the whole game. The music before the game? Let's go, GD. Let's go, Let's go baby. Let's go fly around, huh? Let's go make some plays. Fly around. Let's go make some plays. It was just quiet and very eerie. Let's go. Go challenge him. Let's go. You know, usually when you get out on the field, it's rocking and everything is exciting and emotional. And there was none of that. The first thing that comes to mind is, is the skull chant to, to start the game. Um, the chills that kind of run down your arm. Uh, I was trying to talk to some of the rookies about that and, and how um, you know bummed I am that they didn't get to experience that this year. Hearing our bench cheer and, and hearing their bench cheer for big plays. That's something I've never heard before in a football game. Like you, you never hear your bench clap uh, or you hear your guys yelling from the sidelines. So uh, that was something that was just weird for me all year and never really got used to. And the Minnesota Vikings are going to finish with seven victories in this topsy-turvy 2020 season. If you look back from just a football standpoint across the board, it was bizarre. It makes it more evident than ever, um, you know, that that how important fans are and how much they mean to us. And there's nothing better than than our fans, our stadium, and and the uh, you know kind of home field advantage that that brings. We miss the fans so much. The way that they help us to to get the home field advantage, they're uh, they're the best in the business. Yeah, you always uh, start to look back when the season ends and think about you know, what you did well, what you need to improve upon, and certainly just the dynamics of this season. And uh, it was a very unique one. I think the word I would use would be um, unusual. Hi, right, baby. Let's go, Rook. Let's go make some plays, huh? Let's go. Go make some plays today. You have to try to go out there and coach them with a mask on. They can't hear you. you got to talk to the officials, and they can't hear you. Uh, I know I tried to call timeout one time like five times before the guy heard me. Timeout! Timeout! I'm going to remember this mask uh, pretty much every day, every meeting, you know, along with all the COVID protocols, the fact that every other sink was turned off, every other shower head was turned off, every other locker was empty. There's a lot of little things that, you know, not being able to gather and sitting at lunch together and really have that team camaraderie is, is kind of a bummer because those are the things that uh, you look forward to and, and why you love this game. The travel arrangements, going into the stadium and no fans there, uh, some fans in some stadiums. Just the world we lived in this year and we made it work and I'm grateful to uh, know that we got all the games played. You know, you, you draw on your teammates for support during those times and it brings you closer together as, as a locker room. Uh, it, I think it'll give us an opportunity moving into 2021 to, to be that much closer as a team. Is there something that you'll always remember about this year? Actually, I'm trying to forget it. 